This is my father's off-grid ranch house power room. We're going to be upgrading his um, system today with a system from BigBattery.com. Full disclosure here, they did send me the battery and the inverter for free that we're going to be installing in here. They reached out to me and said, hey, we'd like to help your father out and um, you know give him a decent system uh, so he can run his you know ranch house. And so that's pretty awesome of them. So, um, you know, thank you, BigBattery.com, for reaching out to us and um, helping out my father for sure. Um, yeah, it's going to be nice. My father's excited. Uh, my father currently runs a propane refrigerator, um, you know, propane stove, um, that kind of stuff. Um, he's currently running lead-acid batteries, as you guys can see here. I already had two full pallets of batteries that we removed from here already just a couple days ago that we turned in for the recycling. So um, you can recycle the lead acid batteries. Um, recycle places in your area will take them. And so um, I already took two pallets. We had more batteries all sitting over here. And then literally right here, there's even four more. We had a whole pile of batteries over here. It's time to get rid of the lead acid batteries and upgrade them. Lead acid batteries require a lot more um, maintenance because they require water, distilled water. So you open these up and each cell, you have to make sure that they have water in them. And um, it's an ongoing issue, right? You always have to make sure there's water. In fact, you guys can see his water jug right here that he has to maintain them. And then the other issue is corrosion. So recently he just cleaned up the corrosion on them. But you guys can see, here's an example of what corrosion looks like right here. It'll just build up on the terminals and it becomes really nasty. You know, we're going to get him away from these lead-acid batteries and we're going to be upgrading him. My dad has been running on um, lead-acid batteries forever. Forever. But the problem with the lead-acid batteries is they don't last long, right? They only last a few years and then they no longer work. And then he has to swap them out, buy new ones, constantly buy new ones as they go on, right? And then the amount of maintenance that is involved um, with this is, you know, quite a bit. And I'll show you guys what corrosion does. If you guys can see... The terminal right there is just corroding the terminals. It's corroding all the terminals here. So it's a you know pretty nasty um, you know setup having lead acid batteries. But back in the day, um, you know that's what was available, right? Um, so nowadays we do have some other alternatives to um, off grid living and having power. And so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go ahead and remove all this stuff, and I'm going to show you guys the whole process. So that way, if you guys are thinking about doing something similar for your off grid ranch or your home or your rv or whatever you got going on this might be a solution for you um that we're going to be putting in here for my father going forward so stay tuned and let's start getting things removed and installed Golf cart batteries use a 14 millimeter um, nut on the very top right there. So we're gonna go ahead and zip those off and start removing all the um, series connection wires because these are six volt batteries. So every two batteries wired in series is 12 volts, right? So you have um, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, or you could wire it in a different way to have 48 volts as well or 24 volt or whatever you want it to do. Um, so that's kind of, we, this is a 12 volt system. So we're going to be removing this one now. So we'll unzip this one. And this wire can come off. Just like that. Pop that one off. And we're over here now. now. If you guys could see all the corrosion come off of that when I pop that loose. Lots of corrosion very nasty to deal with this is why i'm so glad that um, bigbattery.com reached out to us to help my father out so we could get away from these lead acid batteries and have a cleaner battery a battery that lasts a lot longer and essentially no maintenance maintenance free i mean look at this that one off right here I don't know if you guys can see that moisture that's on the terminal. It's kind of shiny. That's actually um, acid. 
coming out from the um, ports here where you fill up water, it's gassing off and then it lands on your terminals and your wires and it just corrodes them and eats them alive. Okay, so now all the batteries are disconnected as far as wiring is concerned. They're wire free and now this battery bank is ready to be removed. All right, so I'm just loading up all these old um, six volt golf cart batteries onto another pallet to get them out of the way um, so we can actually get things in there. I'm using a um, battery carrier. It's um, got two metal heavy duty um, clips on the end and then like a really thick rubber section in the middle that you can grab onto. Um, so that's what you guys see me reconnecting and disconnecting from each battery right there. Uh, just makes life really easy when you move them around. So, um, but yeah, work up a sweat for sure moving all these batteries around and um, doing all this, but definitely worth it in the end. All right, guys. So we have the pallet from bigbattery.com right here. As you guys can see, I didn't even open it yet. Uh, we removed all the old lead acid batteries out of the way. We're going to uh, go ahead and cut this open and see what we got. So they packed it well at least. Um, it's covered up well to keep it protected from moisture and rain. So that's really good. So we have the girl watt, the Wi-Fi dongle, and right here is the big battery. As you guys can see, it comes with its own caster wheels, so that way you can easily move them around. It also has a lock on it uh, if you want to lock it up. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this big battery um, upright. We'll remove the cover, and let's see. We're going to take some measurements. That's your battery. This is the grow watt inverter, Wi-Fi dongle, because this can connect to the internet. Mm. So like mine, I can monitor it from my phone because I have internet. Uh, so if we had internet here, you'd be able to monitor it from your phone as well. See how full your batteries are, how much power your inverter is using, how much solar is coming in. Keep going straight up. Guys, big battery is heavy. So we're gonna open up the GrowWatt 3K off-grid inverter here uh, and see what we got. All right. I think I'm gonna move my bed out here where I can sleep with one hand on it. Okay, so it also comes with, uh, looks like a serial cable, USB, um, to printer style cable for um, if you're going to do an update on the grow watt inverter so it comes with everything you need uh, so we'll put this on the side here's our owner's manual um, with a little cd <coughs> as you guys can see uh, it is the grow watt off-grid solar inverter the motto is p spf 3000 tl l v m dash e s uh, so we're going to go through that because we're going to be setting up this battery in user mode um, because um, the big battery.com batteries themselves do not have a um, communication cable plug-in um, so we're going to go into the user interface of the grow watt and set it to user define mode and then we'll go ahead and set the set points for the battery itself so i'll show you guys how to do that when we get there but it cup. okay all right guys, so this battery is quite heavy, so I forklifted it a little bit closer to the concrete slab in here. Come here. And we're gonna go ahead and try to walk it in. Buddy, you watch this right. thing, and you will guard it with your life. So, there's nobody can steal it. If they steal yeah. this, they earned it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's nice. Maybe next. All right guys, so we were able to get the big battery up on the shelf. As you can see, all the lead acid batteries are removed. 
Um, this battery is big and heavy. Um, so we have it up here. I went ahead and put some um, 2x4 blocking across here. We're about to hang the um, 3K grow watt inverter on here. Uh, then we're going to start wiring the battery in, start wiring the solar in, and switch my dad over to the new system here. We'll turn the battery on for the first time and go from there. All right, so here is the 3K grow watt that bigbattery.com sent out to us um, with their big battery for my dad's off-grid ranch here. Um, brand new out of the box. Um, this is a 3K dedicated off-grid inverter. Um, so we're going to go ahead and wire it up. On the bottom here, you guys can see that we have all of our AC um, inputs and outputs. Uh, we have our DC inputs, our on and off switch down here. So for you guys, I'm going to show you guys how to um, wire all this up. We're going to remove the two screws. We're going to remove this bottom section so it exposes the connections inside. We'll push our wires through and make the connections in here. So let's go ahead and get this mounted to the wall and uh, get it installed. So we did use a level to level off our um, inverter here. Um, the vents for this uh, particular inverter is actually on the sides, not the top. So a lot of you guys have seen my other um, grow watt inverters, the 6Ks and the 12K. Those actually vent from the top, um, but this one actually vents from the sides. Um, so we're okay with the shelf up here, it's no problem. We have enough room for our wires to come in here. So on big batteries, um battery they use anderson connections so this is an anderson connection they come in red they come in like a light gray color um so you can buy these if not on their website they also sell the connections um so i have it already i already had my own the anderson connection plugs into the side of big battery right here this is going to come down it's going to come up go into here and that's what's going to be feeding the power to the actual inverter itself Let's go ahead and remove the service panel so we can get access to all our terminals. Uh, there's some small little screws on the side and the bottom. Service panel comes off. Alright guys, so from the bottom of the inverter we do have indications of markings so you guys know which um, grommets to go into. So you guys can see right here it says DC input. So we're going to be putting the negative cable through this side and the positive cable through this side right here. Also on the right hand side we have an on and off switch. And then right here if you guys can see it says PV input. So our solar will be going into this, into this grommet here. Uh, then we have our serial connection here. We have our RS40, let's see, RS485 and then we have a BMS. Uh, sorry guys, I'm leaning down looking up trying to read it here and look at the camera. We have our BMS connection here, our USB here, Wi-Fi dongle plug in here. We have some um, dry contact um, switches right here. And then on this side, we have AC output and AC input. So this is a dedicated off-grid inverter, but you can have grid assist. So if you are putting this onto a gr grid tie home, you could wire this into your breaker panel and um, you would have solar and grid to recharge your battery itself and then if the grid went down it would automatically switch over for you and run off grid um, but in this case we're fully off grid so we will not be using the um, ac input but we will be using the ac output and then there is a reset breaker right here on the very end of this 3k grow watt and then now with the service panel removed we can see right here, so right here was the two battery cables coming in, right here. So you can see where it says negative, positive. This is what's gonna be going to the big battery. And then over here we have our um, AC output on the back side. And if you guys look really close, there's a marking right here. You guys see where it says AC output 120 volts. Um, so it would be connecting to the rear, not the front. The front is AC input, we're not using that. We're using the back terminals, which is the AC output, which is ground, L, and neutral. So as you guys can see, we have three blocks right here. So the one I'm pointing to right now is ground, the one next to it is L, and the other one right here to the far right is neutral. 
All right, guys, so before we actually make some connections to this actual inverter here, um, I want to power the BigBattery.com battery online. So they do have their own LCD um, touchscreen in the front here. So we're going to actually turn the battery on first um, just to see the state of charge. We can also check the cells, the se how balanced the cells are, um, just to make sure everything is good. And then we're going to power it down. We'll plug in our Anderson connection, bring our wire in, and plug it directly into the 3K Girl Watt right here. So let's go ahead and turn on the... Um, big battery displays. So in order to turn this on, you just press it. There's a little button right here. Press it. Bigbattery.com. Boom. Okay. So this battery is 54% charge shipped to us. Um, so we're going to hook up the solar to this and get this charged up. Um, up here in the upper right hand corner, it says 0, 0, 0. 0 0.00 amps. That's because we're pulling 0 amps out or putting 0 amps in. Um, the current voltage of the battery is 51.55 volts as you guys can see the current temperature right now is 86.3 um, degrees Fahrenheit so right before you um, plug in your Anderson connection turn on the screen just by pressing it once it'll turn on and if I press it and hold it it'll turn the screen off um, go over into status and then you see up here where underneath the battery then you see over here where it has the cycles uh, just make sure that you turn that off before you plug in your Anderson connection. And then after you're all plugged in um, to your Anderson connection and plugged into the inverter, then go ahead and press that button back on so that way it'll make the plug live. Just make sure it's off before you guys um, actually um, plug in. Um, and you guys can see right there, trying to get the focus. Um, now we do have other options. We can actually um, move over to a different screen here. So if we move over to this screen, um, it gives us a lot more information. You can toggle the battery on and off. And right here is all the independent cells. So right here, as you guys can see, they're all balanced. They're all identical. They're all 3.2 um, zeros on each cell. And you guys can see that we have all the cells matching. None of them are off. Even with the battery being shipped at a 54% um, charge. Um, so as we charge and discharge, that may change a little bit. Um, but the built-in BMS um, should definitely balance that all out to make sure it stays where it's at. So over time, it might move a little bit. But um, the BMS will do its job to um, you know, make sure everything is within um, the tolerances. So that's really nice. Back to the main screen. So I'm going to go ahead and power this off. I'm going to press and hold that button. and powering off, now it's off. So now I'm gonna go ahead and safely plug in my Anderson connections here, bring my wires down, and I'm gonna make the first connections um, onto the um, 3K grow watt right here. All right guys, so I do have the battery off. Reminder, do not plug anything in unless your battery is off, make sure everything's off. So we're gonna plug in our Anderson connection. I don't know if you guys noticed, my Anderson connection is a different color than that. Um, the only difference with this one is there was a little flap on my in on the inside So all I did was remove that little flap to allow this red connector Anderson connection to um, Made up to that Anderson connection now if you already have the same color connection You don't have to remove the little tab in here um, But th it's all the same really just have to remove that little tab. So let's go ahead and plug in our Anderson connection So as you guys can see, this plugs right in, very simple. We're gonna go ahead and bring in our um, positive and negative cable through the bottom. Let's see here, so we have our positive right here. Let's do positive first. I am running four gauge wire on this. Um, for this 3K um, inverter here, we are technically on this cable overrated, so we're more than safe, um, but if you're depending on your inverter make sure you're running the right size cable if not you take the chance of melting it um, just make sure it's rated for the amperage that you guys are going to be running um, so i'm actually going to fish this behind the inverter and then bring the wire up uh, to be a little bit cleaner installation and my battery is still off so keep that in mind it is off
All right, so we just went around. We're gonna go in through the bottom, make our connection, and um, put our nuts and bolts on. So I'll push the slack in the back so it looks cleaner. Right here's my positive cable. We land it onto the positive. So if you guys see inside, there's actually the marking for positive and negative right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my nut on here, get it going. I'm not gonna make it tight yet, um, but I do wanna get it on there. And then I'll go ahead and put that negative on there. Okay. So my nut is loose. I, don't, I didn't tighten it yet, but it is on there. So we're gonna bring in the negative. Bring that in through the grommet here. Land that. And we're gonna go ahead and put our nut on that one. Okay, so I'm going to get my socket and I'm going to go ahead and make sure I keep my terminal straight, tighten it down, and the battery is connected. It's literally that easy. Just plug it in there. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and tighten down our terminals here. I'll start with this one right here. I'm going to hold it in place. Okay, that one's tight. Straighten up our cable on this one. Okay, so our battery terminals are done. Pretty simple on that. <clears throat> All right guys, so um, as you guys can see, I have a Romex cable here. What he originally had on the end of this um, was a you know basic plug that you can um, make yourself from, you know, you can buy the parts, right? Uh, to make your own plug. Uh, that's what he had going into his old inverter, the modified sine wave. Um, but this is a direct wire, so I removed his plug. I'm utilizing his Romex cable for the AC output. And as indicated on here, it is ground, L, and neutral. So as you guys can see, I have my ground, my black, and my white. Uh, so I have it plugged in there. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up the terminals now. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up our junction right there. So that's the ground wire. Make sure it's nice and snug and tight because we don't want them coming loose. Okay, nice and tight. Perfect. Now we're on our second wire here. Nice and tight. Okay. And our neutral wire. And make that one nice and tight too. Okay. So we have our battery cables connected over here and then over here we have our AC output. The only thing that is not connected to this is the solar PV input which goes to this terminal right here. Um, so I'm actually going to turn on the battery, get the inverter up and running. I'm going to do some programming on this. Uh, let me kind of zoom out a little bit. I'm going to do some programming on it. Um, because this is going to be user defined because the big battery does not use a communication cable um, like a um, server rack battery. Um, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to make sure I select user defined and I'm going to set the parameters of the specs of this battery. Now on the side of the battery, right here is the specs of this battery. So this is the specs that I will be entering into the grow watt. Um, in order to make sure that it is charged correctly and then also you can go online I also downloaded their online version of all the details that have even more specs for the battery um, and um, you know that way if you're not using a uh, communication cable um, you can enter it in manually and then they'll um, you know that way this knows exactly what this is supposed to be at and vice versa so but yeah very simple setup guys the big battery really all you have to do is just get it in place Plug your Anderson connection in, uh, wire up your two positive and negative to your inverter, and that's essentially it, right? T turn it on and it's gonna fire on. And then as far as the AC, there's only, for this one at least, this is a 120 volt model, um, not 240 volt like my other one. 
So this one is only, um, you know, 120 volts. So um, ground, um, L1 basically, and neutral. Uh, and then just PV power, um, PV power coming in. Now, the good thing about these grow watt inverters is um, they can accept a higher voltage of input from your PV array. So um, instead of you having to wire so many panels in series and then parallel them down, um, this one um, will take in 245 um, volts PV. I don't know if you guys can see it right here. Get the camera will focus for you guys. Right there. Sorry, it's a little blurry. But um, it can accept in up to 250, but we want to stay, you know, a little bit below the 245 um, DC voltage coming from the solar panels, uh, just to be safe. So I'm going to go ahead and fire everything on, and then I'm going to work on rewiring um, all the solar panels on this side and reroute the wires in so we can actually start charging the battery. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it on for the first time and see what happens. All right, guys. So I literally just switched the switch on and it turned on and it's working perfectly fine. Now, I didn't change any of the settings yet. I'm going to change the settings. Um, but as you guys can see, I literally just flipped the switch on and it just fired up and it's working. I turned the display on. and As you guys can see, um, we have 54%. Uh, his deep freeze turned back on. He does have a regular deep freeze um, that he was running on a generator um, in order to keep it going. Um, so no longer. Now we're running on the big battery from bigbattery.com and also the 3K grow watt from bigbattery.com. So hey, um, big thumbs up to Big Battery for um, helping us out here. Um, this is going to be a, a life changer for my father here on his house. All right guys, uh, so we have the battery connected, the inverter is on, I went through the programming. If you guys ever need a reference, make sure you guys go through the manual, um, depending on your exact setup. Um, so it's up and running, my father's house is back online, running on the big battery from bigbattery.com. Um, I have his Romex cable wired in, so his house is online. Um, I just wired in the solar wires right here, you can see the two blue wires. Um, so just make sure if you guys are using the same color wires to make sure you guys know which one is negative and positive So you don't get them mixed up uh, So I got it plugged in I'm about to flip the DC breaker on for the solar and what we should see happen on this screen is We're gonna see a solar panel pop up with a little dash line like we see over here So I'm gonna turn it on and we're gonna find out if solar works and it's on There it is. So here's our solar panel popping on and we are feeding into the inverter, which is feeding into the battery. All right, guys. Um, so I just fired on the solar panels. And if you guys can see, it actually says 104 volts. Um, this is actually because I still have my dad's original um, 10 solar panels wired in um, series and then paralleled down. Um, and each one of his solar panels is about 100 watts. And so um, there's five panels wired in series and other five panels wired in series. Um, being parallel down and actually um, the inverter right here is reading it correctly because that's how I do have it wired um, but actually in order to um, make sure that it actually trigger on the MPPT solar charge controller that's built into this unit um, the minimum input must be 120 volts and then upwards of 245 volts so what I actually ended up doing was I um, realized this and then I went ahead and rewired all his um, 10 solar panels all in series. And I was able to increase the voltage um, to trigger on the um, inverter. So I want to point that out here. Um, and in the next video, we actually remove all his old solar panels and we install brand new um, 550 watt bifacial solar panels. We're going to be installing four of them. Um, so definitely stick around um, and see how that goes because it's actually going to be putting out way more power. And I'll go in more to more details about how it's um, set up and how.